Filming in a house is one of the most common places you can shoot. So whether you're a small production or you're a big production, you're undoubtedly gonna film in one at some point. So how do you do that? Let's find out. Hey guys, Evan here with the Drew Academy and I will be your professor on this episode. So in the last episode, we took a look on how to block a street and some of the feedback we got were, whoa, we're not ready to film on the street yet. Are you crazy? Well, look, let's dial it back. Let's start with the basics here. We just finished wrapping up a project for Chef Cook It. They're a meal box delivery kit service. You can check out the final product in the link below. But basically we're using this as an example for the episode because we filmed in two different locations, one a condo and one in a house, and each had its own challenges associated to it. So the first step of pre-production is just to figure out what you're looking for. In our case, Chef Cook It supplied us with the mood board of exactly what they wanted. So with that information, we were able to go out and find these locations. But sometimes explicit directions doesn't always happen. So sometimes you have to look around for different options and that requires looking through the script and figuring out what the tone of the environment would be in. So this is a creative decision that ideally the director can make. No matter what location you choose, the setting must match the tone of the scene. Now that you have your desired location, now begins the hunting phase. When finding your location, you have two options. Either you do it yourself or you hire a location manager. If you've hired a location manager, then the location manager is gonna be the one that takes you along a tour like MTV Cribs to show you the location. The location manager saves so much time. It ensures that the locations that you're gonna go see are already in your budget, they're already available on the days that you're shooting, and they already have communications with the owner. If you're gonna be doing it yourself, then you could take a look at your personal contacts or your team's personal contacts and see if anyone you know is gonna be renting their home for the days that you wanna shoot. Also, you could use a service like Airbnb. A quick note about Airbnb is while I think it's still a very useful tool to figure out different locations in your area, there are some challenges with it. If you're looking through Airbnb, then oftentimes the price that you see is not exactly what you're gonna be paying because the owners charge a higher price for film productions versus if you were just to go and stay there. Furthermore, you may not actually see the location before you show up on the day. So that could be a problem if you're a bigger production because you wanna know exactly where things are. But if you're a small budget, then maybe this could be a less of a concern for you. So what we recommend you do is you communicate with the owner and you tell them everything that you plan on doing. In our case, we had a shoot for My Mustards in Mont Tremblant here in Quebec, and it was a dream come true. The owner didn't charge us a higher rate because we were a film production. They had the location look exactly like it in the photos and we were even able to scout days prior. So it's possible for you to also, but just make sure that you're communicating properly and telling them everything that they need to know. A third option is to contact real estate companies in your area. For some homeowners, they wanna make a quick buck. So you could approach them as they're selling their home to go in for a couple days and shoot your project. Once you have your location, you know exactly where it is, these are when the negotiations start. So when you talk to the owner, you're gonna be talking about things like when your shoot is, what times are gonna be at? Are they gonna be home during your shoots? Then you can start talking about price and making sure that fits into your budget. You could also ask them to send pictures before your scout so that you have a variety of images and different angles to look at so that before you arrive on the day to scout, you can take a look and have a good idea of what the space already looks like. Now comes time to do your first scout. Congratulations, you did it, you did it. Just kidding, we just started. So for the first scout, you wanna have your producer, your director, your DP, and your location manager if you used one. For this first scout, it's really to ensure that the aesthetics match your expectations. Sometimes you may show up and, oh, that's not at all how I expect it to look like. That's what the first scout is for. Once the director and producer and clients like the location, now comes time to book it. And so you wanna use what's called a location rental agreement. In the description, you're gonna find a template version of this agreement so you could use it for your own projects. By old disclaimer, in your location rental agreement, the terms are gonna be different depending on the situation you're in, but the most important things are the names of producer or production house and the owner, the fees paid to the owner, the payment terms, so meaning after how long are they going to be paid after the shoots, the dates of usage, therefore the days that you're gonna be filming at the location, how all intellectual property is going to be released because it's their home, and permission to make changes to the home. 
because sometimes you want to move a couch, you want to take down a painting, you want to put some stuff on the walls. You need to have permission from the owner in order to make changes to the environment. With a booked location, you're now able to do what's called the tech scout. The tech scout is your second scout. And I said that right, that's two. Ah! Two location scouts is the industry standard. The first one is always for aesthetic purposes. And the second one is to address all technical concerns department heads have. So at this point, your shop list and your script are now finalized and people have the time to review it. Because for the tech scout, you wanna arrive and go shot by shot and address all concerns people have. So that means, where is the lighting gonna be? Where is the camera gonna be? And what are its movements? Where are the actors gonna be? How are they moving in time and space? Then the unit department has a chance to see where is the craft gonna be? Where are the hair and makeup? Where is the actor holding? The client space. The unit team can then find out what's around. Convenience stores, hospitals, hardware stores, things that if you need to go out and do a run, you can quickly do, or you at least know exactly where they are. For Cook It, we knew that we had to get a bunch of materials to decorate the living room. So we needed to get a big couch, we needed to get a couple lamps, a couple of aesthetic items to make sure that the room looks lived in. We knew we had to clean the exterior wall of the house for the outside shots. We had to figure out where parking was gonna be because we were shooting in a downtown location. What we did was get permits right outside the building, therefore that the trucks and grip gear could be right outside the front door and all crew parking and client parking is further along. You can figure out where your base camp is located, the video village, and all other little things pertaining to your scenario. The last thing you want to send to the owner before you actually start shooting is a liability insurance. This is a document that your insurance provider can give to you, essentially guaranteeing that any damages arriving on sets can be paid back. There are some insurance companies that particularly specialize in film. So the one that we like is Front Row Insurance. You can check them out here. So now you're in production mode. The most important thing you could do in the home is protecting the space. So that means getting a bunch of cardboard, painter's tape, and carpets. You wanna put cardboard all on the walls, all on the ceilings, down the stairs, up the stairs, every single place that could be bumped into or nudged and create scratches or holes in the wall, you want that protected and taped down with painter's tape so that when you take the cardboard off the walls, you're not gonna be damaging the paint. Carpets you wanna put absolutely everywhere you can. If you don't have enough, we highly recommend that you get shoe scrubs. And once you're all finished shooting and the space has been protected, now you have to clean up. So either you hire a cleaning crew to do so, or you dedicate a team on your crew to make sure that the place is cleaner than when you arrived. Post-production. So you've rented the house, the shot's done. What could there possibly to do? Well. Thank you very much to the owner, we'll go a long way. If anything wrong happens, this is your chance to make it right. So if something by chance did get damaged, then fix it. If something got lost, then replace it. This is all about making it right. Who knows, maybe you're gonna wanna use the location again. So making it right really allows you to be keeping the relationship civil, respectful, and potentially save you time when looking for a location for a future project. And when the video is finally done, it's a nice little gesture to send it to them and say, hey, this is the project we did. Thank you so much for letting us use the space. That was a lot to go through, but look, it's very heavy on the pre-production side, but the production itself and the post-production are equally as important. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you're interested in the merch, this hoodie that I'm wearing and this cap that Mr. Bunny behind me is wearing, then head over to our website and uh, check it out. And if you learned anything in this episode, don't forget to subscribe. We are on a journey for 100,000 subscribers and it would make my dream come true if you smashed and destroyed that like button. That's it for me. If you want to hit me up on Instagram, my name is at Evan Baird. I'll do my best to answer any film related questions that you may have, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Class is done.